guys, welcome to this week's episode of Hot Air. Thank you once again for joining us and also thank you for the support for last week's video. And also a massive thank you to those of you that have entered the uh, free giveaway competition. Absolutely blown away by the comments. I think we're just under 200 people have, have made the effort to, to put the name forward, which is fantastic. I hope you're all subscribed because that means that you can definitely win it. Yeah, it's been amazing. And um, I just want to say as well, um, one of the comments that we had on there, guys, was um, someone said about uh, a young shooter winning, or not necessarily a young shooter, but someone um, who hasn't got a major collection of rifles, just one or two, and um, they use it every every time they go out, sort of thing, as their go-to rifle. I think um, that, like we, we were talking, if we could pick obviously we can't it's, it's the look of the job but if we could pick that that's the sort of person yeah that'd be the ideal situation well. wouldn't it? Um, but if it does go to a collector with 50 rifles in his, and it ends up boxed away in the cupboard then so be it you know it, that's the look of the draw I guess so um, everyone needs to you know be in it to win it sort of thing <laughs> so get, yeah so get, get get clicking on there <laughs> so you can see guys we're back at the range today we're not in the same place we were last week we were on the leather sofas last week out of the rain in the waiting room but as you can see north wales uh, he's having a bit of an heat wave it's at 21 degrees today hot air all this afternoon yeah. so it's very very hot air in that waiting room it's roasting it's like an oven so we decided to come and sit out in the fresh air there are a couple of members up here plinking so I apologise if you're a bit uh, dinking away but at the end of the day we are at a range and you kind of expect to hear that um, so yeah so this week's video we kind of it's more of a debate really than a video as you can see there's a couple of guns like out in front of us I brought my uh, Venom tuned Don Bloxage engraved HW35 I think it's a Mark 1 I think it's an early one anyway. Uh, Schmidt and Bender scoping it. Gareth brought his ISP tuned and blacked um, tribute gun, really. Um, 35. 35, yeah. And um, a stunning example, to be fair to Sean. It's a, a lovely looking thing. Yeah, but well, we'll go over that in a bit. Yeah, so basically, the way this video's kind of come about, or the ideas come about, guys, is we at the shop decided that there was this purchase that we wanted to make, and we went and bought this collector's rifle. Uh, stripped it, it was manky inside, it was a real dirty looking thing. Stripped it, cleaned it, put it back together. Polished um, it? Yeah, polished it. <laughs> kind of, we didn't tune it, but we kind of put it back to what it would have been if it's come from, it was an Air Master, so we've kind of done it back to what it should have been. Um, now this gun, for whatever reason, has brought about a little bit of a controversy and a little bit of a debate between collectors. 50% of the collectors are saying it's not a genuine Air Masters, and the other 50% are saying that it is an Air Masters. And there, there's certain differences across both those groups of people and their opinions differ because of certain things so we was talking about this weren't we? we said you know what that'd be a great show to talk about what makes a, a collectible rifle a collectible rifle does it have to have all the original internals does it have to have all the bits that it would have had when you bought it from one of these tuning companies and that's the reason these two rifles are so similar isn't it because we're trying to show the difference between one that is 100% genuine and original versus one that has been almost like a tribute to um, Venom so yeah, so that was kind of the idea, wasn't it? Yeah, so the, we, we we always refer back to cars, I guess we're blokes, and um, whenever I'm trying to think of patterning something out or talking about something, I always refer back to back to cars and class, classic cars on this time, you know. Um, I think Will said loads of times in the past, if you bought a classic car, would you still want it on the same set of tyres um, as when you bought it, if it was like 60, 70 years old? Hmm. And some people would, believe it or not, like, um, you know, cross buys, things like that. Some people would definitely just want it on them original, even if they were crusty tyres, left alone. And that's, guess, what, what we, I had a chat with um, an, a, a well known air gun tuner, um, hi Nick, <laughs> um, and um, he was, um, I had a chat with him about this, and he's got a collection of rifles, and he was saying some of his rifles he knows don't shoot well. The, 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 the air sports um, and he knows they don't shoot well three of them they, 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 put it this way if he went over them they'd shoot amazing they'd yeah. be so much better but he doesn't want to he won't touch them because um, they, they carry that provenance they carry that um, they're, they're totally original to how untouched, they were untouched aren't they yeah they're untouched so, yeah. so even though they're not completely right now they're not tuned and smooth as they could be when they were brand new um, he still won't pull them apart and tune them himself because, yeah. um, you know, and, and, and it's like he, he actually said to me, he said, if he put one of them up for sale with it being original, you know, it, it might fetch three, two, three, four, whatever, thousand pounds. But then he said he'd expect if, if he was to swap out the internals and put his own in or completely glide it or whatever he might do to it, it'd probably be worth half the value. Yeah. You know. And I think um, that's it, I think if. 
and this is the thing so I've always said if I'm if I buy a, a rifle I'm, I'm buying it because I want to use it for something so I'm buying it to do a job yeah I don't really go around plinking on targets and stuff I mean I love the fact that we've got the range and I have come up here quite a lot and shot targets and stuff and obviously it cans and what have you um, but something like this I would quite happily take this out and go and shoot a rabbit or go and shoot a crow or a pigeon or whatever um, well he's, re he's recently got this back he, he, when when the we got hold of this rifle. Um, you let it go, didn't you? Yeah, so we'd done the video, and then a guy, one of my regulars, had come in the shop and said, Oh, that's stunning, like, I'd love to buy that. And I sold it, made the mistake of selling it, shouldn't ever have sold it. And then the guys had come back in a couple of weeks ago and said, I think I actually want to let it go because I'm terrified of using it. And I jumped at it and was like, Do you know what? I've, I've got to have it back because. Jammy shot. I shouldn't, yeah, <laughs> I should never ever have let it go. Uh, and it'll never go again, it'll stay Can't with me. Can't let now. it go again, can no. you? No. Um, and he's just found his dream scope as well. Yeah, thanks, so. Dave, for selling me that. Um, um, so, yeah, it's got a nice Schmidt and Bender on it, a classic. Um, but, yeah, the, the point I was trying to make, guys, is that if if you're buying one of these classic rifles to do a job and you're buying it because you do want to go and take it down to the range or you want to take it out and you do want to go and do some quarry stalking with it or what have you, um, it's important that it is safe and that it does work. And I think if you're trying to keep it with all the, the original internals, you run the risk of one, it being under power and you're just causing injury to the animal that you're, you're shooting. Or two, it might be unsafe. You know, you might have a safety mechanism that doesn't work. You could have a faulty trigger unit in it. There could be some, an issue with the barrel. The barrel could be bent. There could be loads of stuff. And that's why, in my opinion, I always think it's important to strip them, clean them. If the internals are salvageable, which luckily with this one they were, fantastic. But I think in some cases, like the one we're talking about, the Air Masters, that needed a real good deep clean and then the spring wasn't wasn't fit to be kept was it, it was like a right angle um, so I think you've got to weigh up what it is you want to do with them yeah yeah I think you're absolutely right I mean um, this one had some tuning um, but it's still in the original internals but, but uh, with a slight glide and stuff uh, it's a lot better now it was um, it was left in storage for a long time and I think when I bought it and because of that it had been caked in grease, so um, when I bought it, I had to do exactly what Gwil did um, with with that other one. I uh, strip it down and repolish everything and make it shoot nice, you know. Yeah. Um, but this, I, I was just, um, it's it, it's it's very like putting these two together is fantastic for me because you know this isn't worth this guy's is worth nowhere near as much as this gun this is a venom everyone knows what venoms are worth and um having a venom don blocks is engraved <laughs> fantastic plus it's my favorite stock which is a tyrolean i keep going on about them i love them in fact i've said that the stocks are that similar do you think he'd notice if i switched them when he is not looking I think I <laughs> you know this is a cool stock i'll get it out a little bit this this one's a cool one. Um, it's one of um, Warren Edwards' classic ranges. Um, on his website, he does like a, a classic range of stocks there that you can pick up, um, and and you know it, it mimics the um, the old style. Um, this was uh, when Warren years ago used to use a different guy for his checkering than he does now. Uh, this was the, the the guy that he used many many years ago. And he's done this fantastic checkering uh, with a diamond cut out, and um, yeah, really, really nice. Um, those of you that are jumping at the screen saying it's great, pet, you know it's not. He uses him now, but it, 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 um, it, this apparently was a different guy uh, to Craig, so that's why I don't know his name, so um, I can't say. But um, but yeah, I mean, as a, as far as a, a tribute to this goes, I mean, the only thing I'd say is. My blacking's definitely better. <laughs> Sean, I apologise, but it's not. It is my blacking. So I yeah, so this, is a, this is a proper one. <laughs> proper one. So, yeah, so that's He's my, evil, guys, isn't he? That's my Venom 35, very heavily engraved by Don. Oh, not to everyone's taste. I love it. And like I said, I was gutted to let it go. Um, now, for me, if it, the, the point we're trying to make with this video, guys, if you was buying this, say you've gone and picked this up from a collector and you're potentially parting with a couple of grand to get it in your collection, and you get this home and you strip it and you find out that your spring's not quite right or your top hat's degraded because obviously there was leather in the, 30, in the early 35s and you get to the point where you think, right, well, I can't actively shoot this because the internals are not quite right. Does it, A, alter the value of the rifle if you put a new spring in it and either uh, recondition the leather top hat or change it out for a new one? And B, does it change the fact that it's got that provenance of being an original Venom, if you've changed the things? I mean, I've had this conversation with Gareth a few times. 
again going back to cars or motorbikes if you went and bought an old Norton or an old BSA motorbike and you was in your head you was going to go and use it you was actively going to use this vehicle every day and you knew the brakes weren't quite right would you not change the brakes because you wanted to keep it original and risk coming off your bike or would you change them and know that in its essence it's still an original BSA or an original Norton and for me it's the same with these or, rifles or would you upgrade them that's the other thing yeah, exactly like, you know would, would, you, would you stick some better ones on because you're using it every day but I think that's the thing isn't it? with these especially like cars and bikes you look at things like the, the brakes and stuff if you've got I don't know like an old Cosworth you're going to take the old Cosworth brakes off and put a set of Brembo's on from, from today you probably won't do it if you're trying to keep it looking like the old one but does that detract from the fact that it is still a Cosworth or a Norton bike or whatever, or a Venom rifle? Does it still change the fact that it is what it is? Because in my, it? in my opinion, it, it is still the same. You've just tweaked it slightly to make it usable. Now, if you didn't want to shoot this and you didn't want to use it, and your idea of collecting this was for it just to sit in a cabinet and only ever see the light of day when you were showing it to people, then you probably wouldn't touch the internals. I think mean, that's that's the key, isn't it? So the key is like, what what are you going to do with it? I guess, and then if you are going to go down that route, then you'll hunt mm. for that one particular gun, uh, barn find or whatever you want. You know, that's been left original, I guess. Yeah. And then um, you know, when when you do find that one that's been left original, you're gonna have to part with your money because <laughs> you ain't gonna be cheap. Yeah. Um, but then you get these. Um, well, not these, but th this one is original. But when you get this, this isn't even this isn't even a venom. Um, this I, I, I've just I think I mentioned on the show a while back. We've just had this um, marked up with Sean's uh, company name on, so yeah. that you know there's no sort of debate about who did what. You know it, it needed to be done, um, and I think. There's a lot of tuners out there that use stickers, and I think you guys that use stickers, fine, um, but I, I do think there's a danger there with them stickers, where stickers can be peeled off. Yeah, and that, that's another thing, guys. So we've we've had first-hand experience of this, where we've had people try and sell us um, a Venom-tuned rifle, or like we said, the Air Masters. Now, obviously, one of the, the giveaways with those rifles when they were tuned was these tuners would put their own markings on them. So obviously for those of you that know the Venom ones, it was like the little black sticker with like the, the gold or the bronze, whether it's a Venom or Laser Glide across the top. Or Venomac. Yeah, yeah. Venomac, yeah. Or the um, Air Masters was obviously the oval shape with like the turquoise aquamarine coloured writing across the top. And now we've had, or we've seen examples of where people have actually gone and retrofitted or actually had these uh, stickers printed and then they've retrofitted them to their own. So someone like Gareth has had a rifle done that he wants to make as nice as you can do and potentially look like an original but then if he was to go and stick a, a sticker over the top of it for someone who's trying to build their own collection who maybe not know the difference between a real one and a, a fake one if he goes and puts a sticker on it then obviously he, he can try and sell that to somebody who doesn't necessarily know and I think that's the danger isn't it yeah definitely it, it's, it's, um, it's a tricky one because these aren't cheap these are so expensive um, and I think over the years, you know, you do lose your provenance with your rifle and stuff. You know, who's got the box that the rifle came in? Like, you don't need, when you sell them in the shop half the time, people don't take the box, do they? No. They get a bag, they chuck them in the bag, they walk out the door, they don't take yeah. the box. And like with mine, I, I was looking that I, I did put a picture up, I think, on the first episode we ever did, and it was the Venom price list. Yeah. And it had the 35 circled and underlined, and that's what made me buy it, because I was like, oh, no way, that's kind of like some kind of provenance. I mean, it's not, because it's not the same rifle. Um, but we to did. add something to it, isn't it? Speaking of provenance, guys, I'm going to tell you about a, 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 just a, it's on the same subject. But we had a, a rifle in the shop. I've got to tell you, um, when you look at the Venom, um, one of the Venom signs out there is a 35 and an 80 side by side. And we'll oh, let the trap shot alive! Trap shot alive! Um, we had um, a gun come in, a 35. Still got it. Come back. Did it? So the, yeah, so the chappy. So basically, what Gar was talking about is the old advert for the trap shot a lie uh, venom shop. It's basically two venom rifles stood horizontal, sorry, diagonally to each other. The barrels pointing into each other, and basically the thirty-five that was on the poster was the one that I bought. Yeah, and this the, rifle's come back into the shop. It's actually up for sale in the shop. Now. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we literally um, we he didn't spot it, and neither did I. And we're both then I'm mad now. I've got him hooked on them as well, and um, basically. A customer came in and said, "Do you realise what 
because we we knew it had the bronze, the brass badge saying Venom on the stock and stuff. And the customer said, "Do you realise what you've got there?" Mm. And Gwil collects. He's got. He, you've bought loads of Venom. Yeah, well, loads now, over the last couple of years. Yeah. He said, "Look, look on there, and the wood matches. It's the exact. I couldn't believe it. Yeah, it's the original Venom from Trap Shot Lies, the the one that was used for all the promotional stuff. It's actually sat in the shop. That's crazy. And the other thing is as well with these collectible rifles. Someone came into me the other day, and it says POA on the on the tag. And the customer came in and said, how do you value that rifle? And I said, well, to me, it's worth X amount. But to anybody who comes in, it's only worth what you're willing to pay for it. It's and difficult, isn't it? It is, isn't it? Um, I've done this with my... Um, I, I've had some custom knives made, and um, I never use them. Um, so I, I, I decided to put them up for sale in the shop, and we couldn't figure out a price, did we? No. <laughs> it's so difficult to figure out a price. You know, um, the, 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 I, I don't work from, I, um, for those of you that don't know, I, I'm a network engineer and um, the shop, the guy that made them, he needed some um, Wi-Fi and stuff like that, so I'd done tons of work for him and he made me a few knives. Um, so for me, they didn't cost me anything other than a lot of work, you know. Uh, so, yeah, it's difficult to put a price on, isn't it? And then, yeah. you, you know, all right, pick up your Henny Haynes and go and look at your SOG knives or whatever, and you can pick up the price and say, oh, two-thirds of that or whatever. Yeah. But these are custom. These are handmade. Um, the guy makes his own steel, I've shown. Yeah. Uh, make, he um, forges his own Damascus. And the flip side of that as well is going back to the, the rifles is if you've got one that you know is genuine on the outside, but the internals have been changed to be how working ones, that? how do you price it? <laughs> how do you price Because that? you can no longer say, oh, it's a genuine Venom, because, or a genuine Air Masters, because it's no longer got the original spring. You may have changed the top hats and stuff. Uh, in some instances, you'll change things like breech seals and what have you. So if you've changed all those components of what made that a Venom rifle or made that an Air Masters rifle, how can you ever sell that then as a genuine one? Because is it a genuine one as being a complete package? Or is it a genuine one being one in its essence and then you've just added your own internals? It's if, a difficult if you, one, if isn't you it? were to refer to a car, I guess the internals are the engine, I, I expect. Yeah. And what we're doing is swapping the engine, really, when we're putting in a replacement But again, parts. though, you're not, then this is the other thing. So this is the other thing. That I, this is always my argument back to people. So See, if, this is why it's a good debate, guys. If you, <laughs> say you buy a classic car, say you've gone and bought an Austin Ely or something, or you've bought, a, I don't know, a Triumph Sprite or what have you, and you've bought this car and you've gone, oh, the engine's goosed. So you've then swapped the engine out and you've put the, a different engine in, that car is then not an original of whatever because you've swapped it's the heart of that uh, that vehicle you've swapped the thing that makes it work but if you put the same type of engine back in yeah well that's the other thing isn't it? if you put in if you're replacing part for like for like that's fine but the point with these rifles is more often than not you're not replacing the full thing so the air masters for example the piston the spring guide uh, the seals the top parts are all original they're all fine but the spring is bent, so obviously we can't reuse the spring. It's like a boomerang. So you're only changing. I think the piston was changed as well because it didn't have that brass collar at the top. Yeah, it did. No, we had it at the bottom, but not at the top. I did both, top and bottom. Oh. So I had, yeah, fuzzy bronze, top and bottom. But the. Um, because we've changed the spring, you're only changing a part of that heart, if you like, the thing that makes it what it is. Mm. So does that then detract from the fact that it is what you're saying it is? Or is it because you've changed one internal part, are you then saying it's no longer that, it's just a standard 77 or...? And are you changing them or are you upgrading them, you know, like... But again, are you making it usable because you new, want to use it? The, the new top hats are green, aren't they? Yeah. Um, if you put one of them in, does it change it? So yeah, so it'd be interesting to hear your, your guys' comments and what you think, what makes a collectible rifle a collectible rifle. And I want to know, guys, any of you out there as well, any of you collectors, um, we've been told that there's a serial number separate that's been stamped onto the Air Masters rifles when they've been Air Master tuned. Um, I've asked a few people that have got Air Masters and they can't see anything. Um, we're just wondering, is, is that the case? Can you tell us? Can you enlighten us on that? And that's another interesting thing because, again, going back to that, so we've had people that have got these genuine Air Masters who've spent thousands of pounds on getting these guns in their collections and we've said, oh, we've been told by someone who's really, really in the know, who's like the person that you would go and ask, really, and they've said categorically Air Masters had a separate serial number stamped either on the side or the underneath of the action. But then we've been and spoke to these other collectors and they've said, 
Well, I own two or three, and none of mine have got it on. And what? And a couple of them are chameleons, so you can't really fake them. Yeah. So does that mean then that those aren't genuine, or were there more than one done, and some were stamped and some wasn't? It opens up a massive it's tricky, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's bizarre. That's why I've got to say. I'm going to say it as well. Um, I like the new way that Venom, the new Venom, are doing things. Um, that new Venom. Um, there's a lot of controversy there. There's magazines out there. We'll talk about it one day. But obviously, Mid County Blackins, uh, Darren Harshaw, and he's got the name Venom. Uh, he's been given it by Webley, uh, and it was theirs to to sell. So uh, he's going off with the Venom treat back, and he's got a couple of our guns, hasn't he? Yeah. He's tuning them up for us. So. When we get them back, we'll do a big video on them. I can't wait. I'm so excited for that. But um, what he does, which is fantastic, is he puts a serial number everywhere. Um, on every part of that gun that take, you can take apart, he puts a little serial number. Um, on the piston, he laser engraves the tune that the gun's had. So mm. if the gun's had like um, a full glide or something, he'll write it on. On in and the date and everything else, um, and they'll do it on the on the bottom of the action. Fantastic, and that's yeah. very similar to the full bore stuff because full bore rifles. If you if you put a bore scope down a full bore rifle, you will see like uh, micro dot serial numbers inside the in, inner barrel. So you know straight away you can link that barrel to that rifle. It's exactly the same. And I know that's done for a, a legality point of view. That might be where he gets it, though. It probably is, because he deals with us, doesn't he? deals with full bar rifles. But from a, a tuning point of view, it would make perfect sense, because you, you see yeah. a number in every single component. He's got a big log, big book, um, every one that was sold, starting from scratch, because he didn't want... I, I, I was, we speak to him quite a lot, and he didn't want this problem of... Um, controversy if you like he wants someone to be able to phone up and say I've got this gun it's got a serial number on it it says blah 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 and then he can turn around and say right that had this it had that it had that and it, and it was sold on this date to that person bang and um, I think life would be so much better if it had been done like that from the beginning <laughs> yeah it would and I think because people know there's a lot of these black rifles about and obviously these people that have had stickers made to make the blags look like genuine ones. I, I don't like that when yeah. you call them blags. No, but it is, though, These it? rifles are beautiful. I just wish. But it's still a blag, though, isn't it? it, it, it if someone's it's, been and bought... A, but it's like this, you know, such a nice rifle. It's not right. But say if you went and put a Venom sticker on that, that's a blag rifle. Yeah, 100%. So, the point I'm but making is... It's still a beautiful rifle. That's well, you shut up and let me talk. I wish they'd just my head be honest about, you know... So, let me finish Sorry. this is why it's a good debate <laughs> so if you put a Venom sticker on that yeah. that is then a black rifle the point I'm trying to make is the more of them that come into the the network of gun shops and collectors the more it dumbs down the price of the genuine ones and also it yeah. brings about people going well, that's not real because people straight away look at it and go oh I bet that's one of them ones that's got a dodgy sticker on it yeah. and I hear it in the shop people will say oh I've got a Venom to sell and everyone goes I bet it's not real yeah yeah I mean I used to... Oh, First time I've ever told him to shut up on the channel, by the way. <laughs> no, it isn't. It's been coming no, it for isn't. a long time. It's, it's not. He's telling me to shut up all the time. Always he's on camera. Bully. He's a right bully guy, he's honestly. <laughs> um, he's going to get it one day, I tell you. Um, but no, seriously, on a serious note, um, the, the, there's a long time since I've been go going with these Venoms, and when I had the Venom uh, Club uh, on Facebook, and I used to pick up my... Uh, and i go to Blackpool, They'd be that excited to see a genuine Venom. Lloyd's took several pictures, you know, when I've gone there with different rifles over the years. Um, and, and it's nice to have a Venom come in the shop, but yeah, like Will said, now it's kind of like, the first thing you think is, is it real? You, all, you also feel like it's potluck as well, don't you? Because again, you could have a genuine rifle on the outside, but the internals have been changed. Now, if you're going to buy that rifle off someone, say, oh, do you mind if you leave it with me so I can strip it and have a nosy at it? They'll tell you where to go. And you strip it, no, but even say they do, and you strip it and you look at it, you, straight away you're going to be thinking, well, is it real? Because the internals don't match what it should be. So it is, it's a massive debate, and it, it, there's a lot of controversy around... I think we said a while ago, didn't we, that the ones to look out for are these engraved ones. Um, well, you can't deny that, can you? Because there's no. no way that can be replicated by a machine. And they, um, they're the right age, obviously, by Don, and nobody's um, nobody's faking that or or doing that or anything. So it's um, it's a, you know it's a beautiful thing to look at. The problem with that is for those of you that are trying to build a collection, you try and find an engraved Don anything anywhere. 
Yeah. It's hard work, you're never going to find one. You know, there's a few. Oh, I got Tom Blocks in Greve the other day, got it for next to I was devastated. Skinny knife, yeah, lovely. In my, uh, in my tub, in my day stalking gear. Horrible person. Excellent. <laughs> suits me, suits the rifle, it's brilliant. It's really lovely. Um, but yeah, um, obviously, uh, what we need is another Don, I think. Um, for these rifles and we're, we're trying to sort one out aren't we yeah well he's on with it so the guy we've got doing different bits and pieces he's um he's close to being to being done so that'll be good and, um, then, and then we we are gonna make sure everything's stamped right the way through numbers serial numbers everywhere logged and um, when we do do our little um 10 rifles or 15 or whatever we decide um, they will be completely uh, plastered in hot air and everything else, so there'll be no uh, worrying about where they've come from, if you like, no. uh, and their provenance. And, and we'll put paperwork with them as well, because I think that's another important thing. You know, Venom did give little um, hexagonal or whatever it's called, octagonal paperwork with their with their tunes and everything, but the the amount of them still around, yeah, few and far between. Yeah, again, there's a lot of the stuff that would have been not mass produced, but there would have been a few of them about. And now you just you can't get them. So when you do see something that has got any form of provenance with it, obviously that's why people jump up and see them as genuine. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, need, so interested your... to hear your guys' thoughts on whether this is a, an episode that interests you, or whether you think it's just me and Gareth just. This is sitting on top of his Venom bag as well, by the way. Got to do it properly, aren't you? <laughs> if you're going to do it, do it properly. Um, yes, yeah, so, I. Please leave in the comments, guys. Let us know what you think about collectible rifles. Let us know what you think about. Does it make a difference to the overall uh, example of the rifle or the overall value of the rifle if you do change the internals? If it is an older one and it does have a, a spring that's like a boomerang or it does need work doing to its internals, does that detract from the fact that it is still in its essence what it is? Or would you absolutely not touch them with a barge pull because you don't think that they are genuine? Let us know in the comments, guys. If you haven't entered the competition, please do so. Remember, it is completely free. You don't have to pay anything, but you do have to be a subscriber, so please make sure you do that. And please join us for next week's episode. We're not sure what we're doing yet. We have got an exclusive coming on a new yeah, PCP that pistol cool. that's coming to the market, so fingers crossed we'll get that next week, which will be it's mega. Exciting, that. Yeah. Um, so, yes, yeah, so please like, subscribe, guys, and we will see you next week. Cheers, guys. Take care. Cheers, guys. <laughs>